Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's October 7, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Barack Obama is not welcome in Roseburg. Residents and community leaders are accusing the president of politicizing the tragic shooting in Oregon last week to push for gun control and more gun-free zones. Meanwhile, the hero of Roseburg snubs Obama and says he is not interested in meeting the president. Then... Matt Drudge challenges Obama and Hillary Clinton to give up their guns. Drop your guns, Obama. Take your Secret Service away, Obama. Take away your Secret Service. Dismiss them. And beware of the police state in Gonzales, Texas. If you go over your three-minute talk time at the city council, you go to jail. Be sure you get in touch with Alex Jones. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Last week after the shooting at UCC, Oregon, we saw Obama, Hillary Clinton, the usual suspects. They came out and they said, we have to do something about all this shooting violence. And of course, nobody wants to see the shooting violence. Nobody wants to see any type of violence. But as I always stress, you know, Obama, he came out and he said, you know, I want to see the statistics of people killed by gun violence versus the people shot by terrorists. Well, Okay, well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the people who have been killed by terrorists. Now, of course, he was talking about the people in this country, but you know, when you talk about uh, Obama arming the uh, Al Qaeda rebels overseas or giving guns to Mexican drug cartels, that doesn't factor in. Also, with the number of people killed by guns, you have a big sizable number of people who have been killed by police. And that's not knocking the police, I'm just telling you what it is. Whether those shootings be justified or unjustified is another story. Of course, you have suicides and all type of other activity wrapped into this one big group, not to mention the people who uh, most of the mass shooters, if not all the mass shooters in the past 20 years in the United States of America have been on psychotropic drugs. But nobody wants to talk about the painfully obvious things, the elephant in the room, not to mention the FBI's own numbers talking about how you're more likely to be killed with a hammer than you are to be killed by an assault rifle. But I do digress. Today, we're going to talk about the people in the city of Rosenberg. And now we have a Rosenberg official saying Shooting hero Chris Mintz is not interested in meeting with President Obama. And according to Douglas County Commissioner Chris Boyce, the college hero does not want to see Barack Obama. Chris Mintz, age 30, was shot seven times after he jumped into action to save the lives of the people in his classroom, and he is recovering in a hospital. And he said that he is humbled by the fact that the President of the United States would like to meet him, but he's not interested to meet him when he comes on his visit. And why is this, you may ask? Because uh, I think the people at Rosenberg realize this is just going to be another political tool, a, a piece of Obama's arsenal on gun control. And as I previously mentioned, he has a lot of things to answer for all around the globe, even including in the United States, when uh, people like the uh, Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was shot by a gun through his own Fast and Furious campaign. I think uh, was it the assistant attorney general did some jail time. By contrast, back when Nixon was doing all his dirty deeds, the actual attorney general went to prison for those type of activities. But it goes a step further than that. It's not just the uh, classroom hero. Now we have Roseburg, Oregon residents protest against Obama following the shooting. And a Facebook page has been set up in an effort to organize a protest. The page called Defend Rosenberg Deny Barack Obama states, the anointed one, it's a, it's a bit sensational, I will admit. The anointed one, His Majesty, Majesty King Obama in the White House, 
have announced a Friday arrival in Rosenberg, Oregon, in the wake of October 1st horrific tragedy at UCC. Because people realize, you know, we see uh, people like the Milwaukee County Sheriff, uh, Clark, he's saying if something like this happened in his district, he didn't want Obama or Sharpton or any of these other usual suspects to come in there and stir up this type of division, this type of, you know, we have to come in here and crack down very hard on all manner of things. Because people understand what exactly is going on. And we see people like Governor Como, or Cuomo, however you pronounce his name, Mary Bloomberg, all these other guys, they have bodyguards, they have concealed carriers in the case of Dianne Feinstein. But now we see Governor Como, Cuomo, he says he wants Dems to shut down the government over the Second Amendment. And he said, I'd love to see Democrats stand up and say that they're going to shut down the government or threaten to shut down the government if we don't get real gun control legislation. The inability of the government to restrict the Second Amendment is such a blatant failure of our political system and frankly, such a blatant failure of the elected officials in this country. Well, I think people actually can read the Second Amendment that says shall not be infringed. And it doesn't mean in the case of a governor or a presidential candidate or anybody else. If I can't have a concealed carry, I don't want Dianne Feinstein to have a concealed carry. Mayor Bloomberg, right. how are you doing? Jason, I grew up in Brooklyn. Okay, in the nice. spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will think, get right back to you. You'll get back to me? Would you like a sip of my soda? There is so much going on in the world. Obama now is talking about, well, Australia had a good plan. We may have to do that. That's clearly talking about gun confiscation. Now Hillary's doing it. CNN has pundits just saying, let's just take them. Do these people realize that this is the line in the sand at the Alamo? If they really come out in a frontal assault on guns, it means I think they're trying to start a civil war. It just seems like insanity. I mean, they may tr think that they're Stalin or something. Well, because they're all armed themselves or they all have that security around them themselves. They don't have to worry about. I challenge Hillary, take away your secret service. Take it away now. Take away your secret service. Dismiss them. Have no security around you. Have no guns around you, Hillary. I dare you. I dare you. Obama, same thing. Drop your guns, Obama. Take your secret service away, Obama. Take it all away. Leave the White House unguarded, Obama. Let everybody know there's no guns on the White House grounds, Obama. You know what would happen in 30 seconds? Both of those people would no longer be on planet Earth. So they're asking us to drop our guns and to drop our security measures or, or what? So this thing is very real, and I don't see how it's being taken seriously except for the sick voter. You can't underestimate the sickness of the American people right now. They're really sick. And that's to me. I'm more angry at the sick Americans than I am at Obama or Hillary. I'm really angry at the sick Americans. And that's right, because Drudge understands that they know the balance of power. When you go out to the White House and you see the snipers walking around on the roofs, you see the Secret Service walking around with their big dogs in front of the gate, they know that people see that, oh, man, just the visual deterrent sways many people away. Just the same reason why... You rarely see police stations get fired upon. Now, it does happen. It happened earlier this year in the city of Dallas, but that's a very deranged individual. But by and large, most people who know that they're going to encounter armed opposition will elect to go someplace else. Or even if they rob someplace like a, like a bank, the first thing they'll do is run in there and try to tie up the security guard. But that's a, a different story. I'm starting to digress here. Let's talk more, talk more about Drudge. Because he came on the show yesterday, and this is a guy who's been on the Internet for a very long time, very influential on the internet for a very long time. And he was talking about how people somewhat segregate themselves into these ghettos of social media. And he says, I don't know why they've been so successful in pushing everybody into these little ghettos, these Facebooks, these tweets, these Instagrams, Drudge said on the Alex Jones radio show, this, this is ghetto, this is corporate, and they're taking your energy and you're getting nothing in return. So he's referring to how you pretty much pump up Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these other social media sites. And in some cases, they sell your information, just like when you get on Facebook, and you type in, I went and saw, you know, Hunger Games or whatever this weekend. And then it's like, well, did you want to buy the, uh, the book of Hunger Games? You want to go buy the old movies of Hunger Games? This is how they make their money. And basically, they're just farming your information and you get nothing from it. I mean, I guess you get somewhat of the, uh, the sharing it with your friends aspect, but you could also tweet that stuff. To me, basically, Facebook is just a big Rolodex now. You know, if I need to talk to somebody I haven't talked to in a while, I can go get the phone numbers and move on with the rest of my day. But I definitely understand 
Drudge's point on that. But, you know, at the flip side of that, which Alex was talking about today on the radio show, was he's basically using the enemy's own weapon, their own platform against them. So even though we may encounter Facebook censorship or whatever type of censorship, we can still get our message out there, even though they do like to uh, come down on us for posting stuff that's already on the Internet. Same thing with YouTube and other platforms as well. And while we're talking about all this technology, let's talk about Hillary. As Drudge mentioned, Hillary's uh, physical security apparatus, but let's talk about her digital security apparatus. And Hillary's IT staff is worried that they're going to be asked to cover up some shady business. Employees at the Denver-based IT company that Hillary Clinton hired in 2013 to manage her private email network expressed concerns that they were covering up something shady. And that's according to a letter sent Monday by Wisconsin U.S. Senator Ron Johnson to the CEO of Datto Inc., a Connecticut-based computer cloud storage company. So even the people who have to clean up Hillary's mess are realizing that uh, there's something not quite right about this because, as you recall, she had these servers professionally erased, and I think it was the FBI who was still able to recover some of the files. And once again, if you think back to people like Nixon, I understand that Hillary is not a president, even though she's vying for the position. But Nixon, you know, he breaks into a hotel, he steals some documents and does some stuff. I mean, what he did back in the day pales in comparison to what politicians do nowadays. You know, and all the things that happened to him, multiple people in his administration went to prison. But when people like Hillary or, you know, people in the Obama administration, the Bush administration, the whatever administration, I'm not just picking on Democrats here. Whenever they do things that are just as bad as or worse, they get pretty much a slap on the wrist. They go to these uh, town hall meetings. They go to these political campaigns and people say, I don't want to hear all this hoo-ha about Hillary and her emails. I don't want to hear about Benghazi. Now, granted, I think Benghazi is a much more interesting story than the emails. I will give you that. But, you know, for whatever reason, people have latched on to this uh, to this email scandal, because, of course, we know with Benghazi, Ambassador Stevens, uh, Hillary was receiving emails or, or the uh, what do you call those, the wires before long before he actually ended up dead. So he was sending these things months out, months out. Hey, I think there's a big situation out here. Can you send me more security? Right before his death, they actually took away security from him. And of course, he ended up dead. They dragged him through the streets. He's on the front page of every newspaper around the world. And she said, what difference? That's, that's the picture right there. I think that's from the, uh, from the press conference. What difference does it make? So to me, it makes a really big difference that you pretty much did nothing while this guy is calling you on the phone saying he has a major security a situation and you do nothing to stop it, that doesn't really give me the best confidence that you're going to do the best job as commander in chief. But that's not to say she's the only one. There are plenty of people in Republican or Democrat parties who I don't want anything to do with one way or the other. Now, something that I thought could have been done away with a long time ago, that is the way they process drug offenders. Now we see thousands of drug inmates approved for early prison release because as you guys may or may not know, they have what they refer to as mandatory minimums. So people who, you know, who get caught, caught with, you know, a stick of weed or whatever in their pocket, if you do that enough times, they want to lock you away for a very long time. And to do this, they will actually release violent offenders, murderers, rapists, all number of things back out in the street to keep these guys in the prison. But let's go to the article here. Many defendants cleared for early release starting this fall fit more into a sympathetic profile, small-time dealers targeted by a draconian approach to drug enforcement. But an AP analysis of roughly 100 court cases also identified defendants who carried semi-automatic weapons, had past convictions for crimes including robbery and assault, moved cocaine shipments across states, and participated in international heroin smuggling. So I guess just like you have some of the more minor league offenses, you also have, I guess, some big-time guys who, I guess, moving international heroin, and I'm not vouching for that at all, but for all your nickel and dime, you know, drug users, not even so much the deal, it's like they're putting drug users into prison like this. And a lot of your uh, heroin addicts or people like that, they need treatment, not so much a prison sentence. And I guess the uh, rationale is, well, we'll put them in these facilities and they'll dry out, but that doesn't always work because we hear stories about people ODing even in maximum security prisons. And how the stuff gets in, I don't know, you know, whether they have corrupt guards or whatever.